listener X, who we call uh, Chauvin. Ted. Were you not? Um, I'm not really sure. Would you guys Ted? ride on Audi? Or no, no, you haven't been on this no. side of the state. No. 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 So he doesn't know him. Jack, you lied. No, and I'm he... Sorry. Yeah, uh, Ted was at WCU way away from yeah, here, yeah. so mm. I don't think he yeah. Ted's younger. a Midwest guy. Mm-hmm. Is he? Yeah, he grew up in Where's Chicago you? or somewhere. All That's right. the surliness in him. Mm-hmm. Well, we caught up. I'm going to ask. I'm going to be asking Brent about his his perspective here as we get going. But um, it just kind of playing around with show format, so you know, you guys got to kind of hold on with me here. But um, we're going to start <laughs> off with a news segment, okay? Um, so. There's been a ton of shit happening in in the world of cycling these last week, especially. And um, so I think it's probably time we touch base on some of these news stories. So I feel like a real newscaster when I bring my news copy up in front of me. All right. So, gentlemen, I have um, let's look at it. I have six stories that I'm, we're going to be able to provide news and commentary on. The first one, of course, just happening today. Russia banned from the Olympics and global sports for four years over doping. I will give you a brief introduction if you have not heard it yet. And I'm reading directly from our friends at the New York Times. Thank you very much. I'm probably going to get sued because I'm reading their copy. (laughs) I'll I'll change every third word. Global (laughs) anti-doping leaders, poop, agreed unanimously on Monday, poop, to ban (laughs) Russia from international sports, including next summer's Olympic Games in Tokyo. For four years, the latest and severest punishment yet connected to a year-long cheating scheme that has been tarnished in the sport. And if any of you guys saw the documentary, um, correct me, what's the name? I curious. Yeah, yeah, that that dealt with this very issue and brought a lot of this stuff to life. And so four years is is what Russian athletes are are staring down the barrel at. Um, Obviously, this is just from international competition. It's not going to affect any of the pros or anything at that level. But um, what it is saying, um, many you know athletes are going to be able to, the Russian flag, the name, and the anthem is not going to be allowed to use in Tokyo, although athletes not implicated in the doping could compete under a neutral flag, which is... Wasn't it the Olympic flag last time? Yeah, I think it was, it was the yeah. last time. So this one, it, it's coming down obviously a little bit more uh, serious. Some people are saying it's nowhere near serious enough. Um, do we have any commentary on what's going on with any of this stuff from any of our expert panel in terms of <laughs> screw them, they deserve expert it. Um, it was not enough of a, of a serious punishment or, dude, everybody's doing it, let Russia compete. Anybody on any side of that three-sided fence? Jack seems to have his first opinion. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, look at Russia and politics to this day is... is uh, you know, it's a state-run sporting association, and lately, you know, Russia's been kind of um, interfering with us and interfering with everybody else in the in the world. So I don't put it past them. I mean, if you just look at politics today, they're 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 kind of the evil empire, and and um, they're looking for an advantage. Is this severe enough of a punishment? Does anybody have an idea on that or an opinion on that? I think it's a that? start, in my opinion. I think that's, you know, I think that, that four years is fine. Uh, I think there's many other countries that are just as guilty. I think Russia is at the forefront, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I have no basis on this, but, you know, sports is always, you know, it, cycling's always had the bad, bad rap, in my opinion. But it does more on testing than any other sport. Um, so I think that if they start pursuing this, and it'll be interesting, what is that that last uh, um, deal with blood doping with that Austrian or actually German doctor, the Austrian guy? Yeah, yeah, deal. yeah. So we'll see how far that goes into it. I mean, the first ones we find out, of course, are cycling because maybe we're in cycling, but, you know. And it affects <coughs> a lot more than just cycling. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got swimmers, weightlifters. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, so to, right, yeah. to mm-hmm. to. Um, Let's be honest. Cross-country skiers have mastered the art of doping compared to <laughs> cycling. Was yeah. this specifically cycling or was it all sports? This is across sports. the board. Yeah. This is the entire yeah. country banned Their from global sports. Olympic, yeah. Yeah. So it seems Soccer. like you have you know, different, yeah. different sports are going to have different levels of guilt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it might be a little unfair that it's across the board. So that, but that's banned. how you get a, a federation but, to change. Yeah. If yeah. the federation as a whole, which is the state... If you eliminate the soccer team and you eliminate the swimmers and you eliminate everybody, 
maybe there'll be a, uh, a, a, you know, the society may actually push back on that and go, well, you know, if we can't, I mean, the, the swimmers get to what they get world championships, they get some champ Eastern, yeah. you know, yeah, that's European that's championships. Yeah. yeah. This is their for every four years. Yeah. Archery. I mean, you know. What? Yeah. Somewhere there's a curling. <laughs> These a guy guys for the curling be, team just going. That's not Summer Olympics. <laughs> son, of, son of fucking beach. I am so upset uh, right now yeah, because yeah, cyclists, yeah, yeah. they don't. Yeah. And now I don't get to <laughs> play. Right. Was, was that good? Was, was that a good dialogue? Canadian, Very did on, well with that. There was a curler that got busted for That was for a do- Canadian. For doping? Canadian yes. curler. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What? T- yes. For the, was he one of the sweepers? One of the guys. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine how much. He's all jacked up. Jesus, look at the speed of that broom. Yeah, yeah. It's even and the the endurance. Night. He can just do that all day. Yeah. <laughs> over and over. All right. So um, did we come to a conclusion? Um, it's justified. Justified. Well, what do you think, Brent? Brent? <laughs> I would take it sport by sport, but yeah. I do see the point of, uh, of a harsher penalty can have a better effect on you know stopping it all the way around. Mm-hmm. And is it going to will it will it truly change? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I I honestly think they should go with even the athletes. And this is going to sound harsh, but even the athletes who weren't caught should be punished along with it. They shouldn't, you know, they shouldn't be allowed it'll to create compete. Protest. It'll create, absolutely, yeah, like, and it hey. it would create something far more uh, productive. You know, I mean, it's yeah. you know, punish everybody for the crimes of the few, and then ever sudden, you know, maybe yeah. that'll. I don't know. I'm a high school teacher. And I yeah, that's punish, exactly I how you rule the whole out. class. <laughs> yeah, it's just like all of you yeah. zero. Yeah, because one kid got caught. Yeah. 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 All right. That one. That one is not very. Sp- in 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 case you can't tell, I'm I'm going from from broad to specific here. So our our, our second story, um, and you guys might have heard this one this morning. Um, our good high maintenance friend from Australia, Rowan Dennis, has signed for Team Ineos. All right. Uh, 2020, he's going to ride for those guys. He's officially confirmed. He was fired by Bahrain Merida, uh, Merida, sorry, and they call it an acrimonious separation. I, th- I think that's what my wife put down on my divorce. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was just having a flashback of my parents split, and I was going, I don't know if that was acrimonious. I kind of could have sworn I heard some fuck yous in there, yeah. even though I was a little kid. Might have been a translation issue with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he was initially exploring a uh, mid-season, mid-season move. He had been talking with CCC, Mobistar, and Trek Sagafredo. Um, is is Ineos becoming... One, first of all, what do you guys think of the switch? Second of all, what do you think of... Is he going to get mad at uh, his Pinarello? Um, third is... Um, is this Is this team becoming the... New York Yankees of cycling where the biggest amount of money dominates and it's just going to crush the sport. Yep. yep. Okay. And yep. Am I just asking all very simple questions to respond to? We all look at Brent. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I, I did actually watch the, the interview with him, um, the video interview they had with him. And um, I mean, it seems like the whole issue before was kind of around equipment. And yeah. it seems like Ineos, you know, they're going to do a lot better job of getting him the equipment he needs <laughs> yeah. to do the time trials. I mean, that's kind of going to be his focus this next year. It sounds like with the Olympics coming up and he sounds like he's doing the Giro with the, there's three time trials in that. So um, I think, I mean, as long as they can keep him happy with giving him the right equipment that he wants, Can't they it's probably going to work out. Spray paint a BMC flat black and put <laughs> Pinarello Dogma stickers on. Can't do that anymore. Good. They used to do that. Like the old I mean, land yeah. shark. Yeah, like anything. Yeah, you yeah. ride a Sirota and you're on a land Murray shark. or whatever. Yeah. You know, not I mean, puppy. yeah, puppy. yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. N- not on the pro ranks anymore. They, they, especially saddle. If you have a saddle, uh, I think there, a few of them can get away with it on contract. Uh, Nibali likes uh, physique, and he was sponsored by another Concord. saddle. And, yeah, Concord, just like yeah. that. Right? Concord. Where is it? It's Where right is the, the anchor? Right oh, there. I think it's a paperweight Brent, now. Brent needs to handle that, which is what go. it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't seen one of these in a long time. Yeah, that was the saddle, man. That was the that was the turn. The still punisher. the saddle. No, it's always the Punisher. Well, I, I think we're going to still see <laughs> if there's any any team that can afford to put a cap on his temper, and that would that's be the endless. thing. It's who's going to be able to babysit him the most. I, they'll have. A campaign of people if they want to spend the money they have psychologists they have everything yeah. that, that's what he needs is a psychologist yeah. yes yeah. So. yeah 
is insane. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, the, the, the dude's fast. It just seems like uh, he's really, really picky about obviously what he what he rides and how he rides and when he rides and things like that. I mean, you know, it works. It just surprised me that obviously he's so high maintenance that he had a tough time finding a team. Mm -hmm. Yet he's no Chris Horner. He's on Ineos. He's not on where did Horner end up? I don't even remember on a domestic U S team of some sort after, you know, after the reigning tourist, yeah. yeah, yeah. the reigning tour yeah, Spain winner ends up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ends up on a, on a smaller team. I'm not saying Chris is high maintenance. I don't know Chris from a hole in the ground, but, but Carson does. He mows his lawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who mows who's lawn? Who's mo who mows who's yeah. lawn? Yeah. Carson. <laughs> he Chris mows. Yeah. Carson. Maybe uh, they take turns. Yeah. Hey dude, it's your turn. It's your turn. Yeah. That would be interesting, having Chris Horner mow your lawn. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, looking at um, other team news, uh, Bahrain McLaren came out with their new kit today. Anybody see that bad boy? Jack, it's black you need shorts. To see it? Black shorts. Um, I did. I did keep it intentionally mm -hmm. so you guys could all take a look. And our listeners at home are going to have to just you know go to their own freaking devices. I of commented some sort. on on your Instagram about did that. You? Black shorts. Um, That's the only yeah, make Paul happy. Up. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, um, uh, it looks terrible as a skin suit. I mean, it looks yeah. as bad as. Do you guys follow F one up there? Yeah. That's the thing. That's yeah. their color. I think that's yeah. what they're going with. McLaren. And they're intended okay. to. Why won't my photos come up? Nothing works when I want it to. God mm. bless it. Oh, there's a picture of Rebecca Twig. Where's your <laughs> IT department <laughs> when you need it? Yeah, I miss CP. Rebecca. CP should be here. Yeah, he should yeah, be. Yeah. CP is get the in IT your department. Damn yeah, yeah, he's IT. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what I did is I upgraded the software and everything, and nothing, nothing looks like it should anymore. Oh well. Um, you guys have seen the kit, right? Yeah. No, I've Brent seen the kit. I've okay. seen the kit. I'm yeah. not as big of a fan of kind of the the faded gradient kind of stuff on the kits yeah. as I am more kind of solid colors, yeah, me too. Uh, crystal lines, and that kind of thing. Yep, I'm with you on that. It looks like vomit. Mm -hmm. That's right here. In my personal opinion. There it is. Yeah, it's the orange top fading to this. Do, I, do you have a camera that I can like? Yeah, there's one <laughs> right there. Orange yeah, vomit. Yeah, nobody saw it. They just saw your phone, yeah. basically, is what it's looking like. Um, I, th 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 yeah, it's, I, I guess, you know, um, following the education first lead, it could be something that stands out. It will. So I'll give him that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely will stand out with uh, the Peloton, I think. Yeah. With the, the orange color. <laughs> I didn't like EF first at, at first. So yeah, I you did like that. it. It does grow on you. Uh, it does. Now I don't mind it. And their I new kit's out I still don't again. like it, but uh, it's more tolerable. More, more really palatable. serves a purpose. Yeah. Really serves a purpose in well, terms of what they're striving getting for. Getting to Bahrain now, McLaren. Yeah. Because they got Ellensworth there. Yeah. And they're shooting for, you know, uh, What's his name? Your, your buddy Cavs there, yeah. but th they're trying to hit. I've forgiven heavy. him a little more oh, okay. since then. Right. I actually so. started feeling like an asshole before how harsh <laughs> I was on Cav over the years, and then I just went, God, it sounds he's like he's losing now. Yeah, no, I gotta like yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Richie <laughs> Ports. Yeah. 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 There you go. The yeah. guys Pat likes are fucked. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the kiss of death. I'm the <laughs> I'm the John Madden uh, uh, the Madden NFL cover sport. I I lost you guys, didn't I? You guys. No, I get you on Madden. No, I guess the whoever's on the cover of the Madden game that specific yeah. year oh, has no, a you horrible lost year. Next year is has yeah. a horrible year. Mm. So if I endorse a rider, that's it. They're done for. And you got a lot of power in this universe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hate he, me, will you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I'm just no. Never mind. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, we have those, um, it, and I now know why Rowan Dennis left that team. Because he knew, kit. The kit yeah. he knew the kit was coming. He knew the kit was coming. I'm not wearing that shit. In, yeah. in similar news, uh, Sam Bennett, Bennett switching to the coin of quick step after the very controversial long term, almost as bad as Rowan Dennis type of a leave. Um, that should be a, an interesting add to the to the Wolfpack team. Well, Sam Bennett was complaining about on Bora anyway once. Uh, he was he was in the tour until Sagan got on the team, and yeah. then Ackerman started becoming the next sprinter. And it's very German base, so this poor Irishman felt pushed out. He's a talented guy, but uh, I mean, it was talked about like the Kunik was talked about before the season even ended. It was like no surprise really. Yeah, so. 
He just, I, th- I think they wanted to hold on to him just to keep everything as magically, as wonderful as they possibly could get. Um, okay, I'm, I'm jumping through uh, news stories here. Um, I, I do want to bring this up because this is, this is just, I, I just find this funny. Who has not seen the, the Peloton commercial? I've seen it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> Uh, okay, let, let, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble here. I don't want to get in trouble here. But uh, this one, um, okay, first of all, you guys know the Peloton bikes are about 2500 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. And that's not including a, five, a $50 a month membership. First of all, I want to talk about the commercial itself. And then, uh, and what if you guys noticed anything right out of the gate. And then second of all, I want to ask about um, what is this product being marketed to <laughs> well, excuse me professional sneeze i don't have a sneeze button even though i could have just done that which muted my mic and then i could have turned my mic back on but, but you were i did mid sneeze i was mid sneeze yeah um and then and, uh, talking about i know zwift is cool i know sufferfest is cool i know the, obviously this is capitalizing on something but is cycling becoming are we just are we just becoming wussies? I mean, where it's just this whole thing where it's just it's just for the elitists, it's just for rich, it's just for, you know, now this whole thing of just riding indoors and not going anywhere. Um, I, am I asking too many questions? First of all, thoughts about the Peloton ad. Does anybody... First time I saw it, I'm not going to lie, first time I saw it, I thought, shit, that lady's position's all fucked up. <laughs> Her ass is bouncing off the saddle while oh, she was riding. All those commercials, they're... they're they should have like a setup. Yeah. You know, when you get on the bike, they, mm-hmm. they have some kind of. Yeah. If you're going to pay that money. And then it's, it's and then I just realized after I was watching it that I was like, oh, yeah, technically this guy bought his wife a bike and she's really thin and she was guilted into getting thinner. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I asked my wife Crossed. about she, I, well, I said, watch this. And then because I think we're in the state of everything's judged. Oh, it, God. it didn't cross my mind. There, there could be tons of ser- scenarios. Mm-hmm. There, maybe there's implications of it, but maybe she asked for one. Or maybe she goes, you know what? Yeah. I have a goal for a year to lose weight. Or maybe he's just a total jack-off idiot and says, <laughs> hey, hon, I like your ass a little tighter. <laughs> I don't know. But it doesn't, It doesn't. you know, when <laughs> I watch that, it didn't cross my mind. And I'm not interested. And I'll touch a story. Anything that gets people off and, and into shape, I'm for. But that... I've seen so many extra indoor exercise stuff that d- ends up hanging, dr- drying clothes on and stuff. And I've got twenty five hundred bucks and yeah. fifty bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I got, I got a treadmill upstairs that is holding. Oh, well, that's yeah, that's yeah. everybody's treadmill holds clothing. Yeah, yeah. So my wife and I were talking about this and the that commercial and people complaining that she you know showed up then and what's she gonna do? You know, is she gonna get thinner? Or, uh, the the thing is, is fitness doesn't equate your actual size. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Paul doesn't look any different now where he doesn't ride versus June. Mm-hmm. Right. So why are we? Well, his entire midriff is wrapped in saran wrap mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just for the show. He's sweating like <laughs> shit right now. But, you know, so, <laughs> so yes, if, if it was, if it was Jenny Craig commercial, you know, you're going to start out at 350 pounds and you're going to end up at 205, but this is a fitness in your house. Don't leave. You're up every morning. I mean, the, I think the, the concept is, is totally different than a, a, a diet, you know, get on, get your ass off the couch. It's more like a lifestyle change. So I don't think, I don't think your size always equates to your fitness and i will agree but we keep cutting off Brent. we could have come up Brent. but I, i'm gonna but my wife wants to get back in the running she used to run a lot and did marathons and she's so always, she's cool she's, well she's my wife yeah yeah, yeah you so. he had to say that by contract <laughs> So. She is. She is. It's just we forget. But she, she never really gained a lot of weight after running. I mean, she's busy. She's a hardworking nurse. She's always going yeah. and going and going. But she's not in shape. So she wants to get back into running. And that's how I perceived it is like, you know, she'll probably not gain any or lose any more weight if she started running. But she's going to be more fit. So right. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't. We'll have to ask Peloton or Brent. 
Yeah. Brent may have an idea. I mean, I watched the, I, I only watched it one time, but I did read a lot of Twitter comments. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, I think one person was talking about just how the ad was so odd with, like, it changes perspectives. First, like, that the husband is, yeah. the camera's from the perspective of the husband, and then it's, after that, it's like, you know, who's she talking to kind of thing, and it's, uh, and so that was kind of a weird thing with the ad. I think it's just, it's just a really odd perspective. Oh, she's terrified. Um, it's, yeah. yeah. It's like, Okay, honey. I thought it was a video diary. <laughs> it was, she was kind of doing but a video then diary. she shows it to him a year later. Like, here's what I did to you pr- prove of this. And, you know, and, and I, I will say that she was thankful. She seemed like, thank you, honey, for buying me this bike because it has transformed my life. And, you know, my ass is sore from bouncing off. Why didn't she get me fucking My position's fitted. all wrong. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've fallen in love with an instructor and I've left you. Um, <laughs> but I, um, I, I read somewhere that somebody said the commercial was from the wrong perspective. They should have almost taken it from straight from her, not the gift was given to her. She said, you know, to start off the commercial spot by saying, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I really want to change. Mm-hmm. Um um, thank God I, I now have this wonderful gift and I'm going to, you know, blah, 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 blah. I also think that we're at a certain point in time where everybody has way, way, way too strong of a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a commercial. Yeah. This is, uh, this is something where if you don't like it, you can just shut the fuck up and change the channel. Uh, but Peloton has lost, in the first three days, they lost over $1.5 billion in their stock revenue. In Alpha. three days. Wow. Because of this commercial, well, I mean, this middle of Christmas buying season, yeah. they're probably they're probably hoping to sell a lot of Peloton yeah. bikes yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just unbelievable how uh, you know how much that effect has it on how much social media has on it, and then it just you know, oh my God, I saw some hilarious uh, parody accounts from yeah. from people who are doing Ryan, stuff like, what's his name? He owns the gin. Oh God, Ryan Reynolds yeah. did a brilliant one yeah. with the actress from it. She's yeah. just staring at a camera, sitting at a bar, and she throws back a whole thing of AV. <laughs> Or gin, which is Ryan Reynolds' gin company, and the, his girlfriends are going, oh, "You're in a safe place. We're here for you." And she just threw back a whole martini. Yeah, yeah, which is, I mean, hilarious. And he says, "Peloton bike not included." Um, are they any any type of? And there's now a new term out there called Peloton husband. Hmm. So if if you're a demanding asshole who thinks your incredibly thin wife needs to be thinner, you're a Peloton husband. Um, is there recovery from this in any personal opinion? Are they going to be okay? I don't know. I think Americans have very short memories. Yeah. Very yeah. short. So Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And good press, bad press is good press. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as bad yeah. publicity. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I bought a, I bought a Festina watch in 1999. Nice, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> After the right So it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's they still make those. I think they, they're yeah. still in business. Sure, they yeah. do. One of them. And it comes with a syringe of EPO. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a James Bond thing. Uh, you just grit your teeth, grit a specific tooth, and the whole thing just injects right into your wrist. Right. right? It's yeah. just yeah. You don't even take the watch uh, off. Push the button. It's a microdose. <laughs> it's a microdose. All right. Well, last of our uh, of our news stories, and this is bringing you somewhat closer where I can ask Brent about some of his questions. I mean, about some of his stories here. Uh, Lifetime Fitness. In case you guys don't know about Lifetime Fitness, they are um, a gig. They're a event promoting company, promoting promoting company who um, prominently I've, I've experienced with at, at Leadville. Mm-hmm. Um, they have uh, recently purchased Dirty Kanza, mm-hmm. and they oh. just purchased, uh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Crusher and the Tusher or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Three very large scale events in the new genre, and I use my quotation marks as possible, uh, building a, a gigantic event empire, so to speak. And in fact, I think they've now got they have something. a new race coming up in like Arkansas. It, do they? Yeah. And and also including something, I think there's a now a double where you can race Leadville one day and then the steamboat gravel event the next day, which Jeez. are just gigantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would do that back a to back? A lot of people are getting They're on board. Insane. Pat, yeah, Pat would do that. No, I think that was more of a like a, they had a calendar conflict where they kind of accidentally set their events on the same weekend. So they just created. <laughs> they, just, they, created cool. they created out of uh, <laughs> necessity. How many stupid people are out there. <laughs> Um, I, I, before we get into uh, the, the 
the events themselves, um, is this a good thing? Is uh, somebody taking over all these little events and slowly make it in into now gravel is this new thing it's this grassroots it's this natural feel it's this comfortable good old boy back when mountain bike racing used to start it's a party atmosphere we've got major corporations coming in and they're taking over is this the beginning of the death of gravel i'm gonna start with brent well i think in terms of the crusher it's uh it's sound i mean that event's been around for 10 years and um, I did listen to an interview with Burke Swindlehurst, who's run that event. And, I mean, he was kind of getting to the point where it was becoming too uh, too big for him to kind of yeah. keep keep running. And, you know, his, his friends and family have been, <laughs> have been helping him out for 10 years. And it's like it's uh, – so it, it was a natural process for him to kind of let them take that over. And, you know, he went to Leadville and, and saw um, how they ran the event there. And uh, – and, uh, so I think that's so I think for that event particularly it's a good thing, um, but these events are growing and they're getting bigger and more yeah. people want to do them, and um, I think having, uh, it'll, I think it'll be interesting, more like the the event that is created in Arkansas. I mean it's going to be a first year event, and you know it's, it's an event that hadn't even run before and it sold out in like fifteen minutes. Uh, yeah, so unbelievable. And so yeah. you, you wonder is that event going? You know you have the backing of a. A gr- it basically sold out in 15 minutes because you have a backing of a group like Lifetime that yeah or that came that came in and they have the reputation for running Dirty Kansas so um, so people are, I guess have the confidence that it's going to be a good event just by the by the reputation of the I mean I guess group, I, sh- I guess I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth um, here I spent a lot of time on this show talking about events and how we need more and um, how everything's just kind of suffering and then all of a sudden out of nowhere there's a group here that comes in and is making bike races happen and i wrote i raced leadville and leadville was run incredibly well and is that my phone running there we go um i'm just trying to monitor my audio um (laughs) i read i raced leadville and leadville was run extremely well i mean you felt catered to the entire time so maybe it's not a bad thing that these guys are putting these things on and they're running races really well and making this type of thing happen. I know that there are people out there probably here going, no, fuck it, keep it small, man. We got to, you know, got to huddle together and, you know, pretty soon they won't let you drink a beer after the race or, or those types of things. Um, and But do we... Is gravel past the point of it's not going to stay small anymore? It's... I think there's going to be just more events keep on coming on the calendar. So there's going to be more events to do. And in a way, I think a lot of these are big events where it's a really big entry fee. Yeah. They kind of become a bucket list item for people to do and they do it once. And especially if you're going to travel something like a dirty, dirty cans, unless you live in that yeah. vicinity, you're going to say, I'm, that's going to be a, on my bucket list. I'm going to do it one time. And, you know, so you wonder after like five or six years, if, 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 you know, People move on to something else. They've kind of done some of these big events and got out of their system. Or that, <laughs> I guess unless c- new people keep on coming along, I guess. And that's a great point. To, yeah. Well, I, Leadville's kind of in that same thing. I did still. Leadville once, and I don't need to do it yeah. again. I get yeah. mm-hmm. I get the notification the lottery's opening, and I'm going, no, I did that one. Unless, you know, I, I did it with, you know, maybe Hi. Jackson <laughs> at some point in time. Jeez. But... Um, but other than that, no, I don't need to go do it again. And and I see what you're saying there. Those those huge events do spawn small events. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be somebody that's like, hey, I know this gravel road that, you know, I'm mm-hmm. gonna, you know, put on a weekender and and it becomes something. There there can't just be the you know Super Bowl of. You're talking about like four events that are huge. What's the what's the turnout? What's the entry or the the people? For quantity for what for like Dirty Kansas isn't like oh, Dirty Kansas uh, is up to about twenty five hundred yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah, 3, um, so you got to have those three hundred person events or those hundred yeah. person events I mean so I think it'll yeah. it'll it's it can't just be those those races it's gonna create much much more for a while and then yeah people get burned out on that corporate you know thousand dollar entry fee or whatever what's Dirty Kansas I'm I mean, not sure what Dirty Kansas is but. Um, I know I'm doing. I just signed up for a, a kind of a big race oh, yeah. up in. Um, well, I signed up for one in, in Vermont called the Rasputitsa. 
it's kind of the first it's, it has a national reputation it's a kind of the first big kind of national level gravel race of the year but it's Rasputitsa means mud season I guess in Russian mm. and so it's the time of the year in um, in April or Mar- it's like in March actually but it's uh, the th- these are thawing out and the roads are pretty muddy yeah. And last year, it just had a torrential downpour. <laughs> people were, like, half the people uh, got hyperthermia and everything. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> that's, that's why so, they're there. But, but people, times, but, but the... Uh, so please come back next yeah. year. <laughs> but the entry fee for that thing was, like, 150 bucks. Oh, okay. So, um, but they put on a good event, and people come out, and it's, like, a whole weekend party type of thing. I and think Ted King did that. That's where he launched, like, he did a whole series of uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, he, well, th- th- that's another one I did last year called uh, The Overland. That's what it was, yeah. And that's a really great event too. We're in the shirt. Um, and then Ted oh, yeah. King started. Uh, he has a race up there called Route of Vermont. So in, in Vermont, which is like I can get up to Vermont in a, a few hours drive from where I live. I mean, there's a you have a gravel race, a, a gravel, some kind of gravel event. I mean, there's all different types of events. Whether it, some are more race oriented, some are more just you get out and ride and do the course and have fun. Um, but just about every weekend, it seems like you could do wow. some type of event wow. during mm-hmm. from you know from. March to end of October. So, see, uh, you, first of all, you covered about half of the questions I was going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, first of all, what what took you to gravel? Was it, as a guy who was a who was a roadie with all of us back in the day. Now, to I, I don't know if you're not just focusing strictly upon it. I would assume. No, I do a lot of road riding out. Um, kind of live in Northwest Connecticut. There's really great roads to ride on. Um, not much traffic and so we do a lot of road riding but i think i I moved out to connecticut like 18 years ago and uh ever since i've been out there i had a cross bike and there's just lots of little dirt roads that connect other roads so i mean a lot of the rides we do um we've been riding those gravel roads i mean we used to ride them on our road bikes you know there are a lot of in guess the midsummer they're packed down really nice they're pretty fast and um we've been riding those roads since you know the last 15 years or so but now with these these new technology and the bikes yeah. it's just you can bomb down the downhills a lot faster than you can mm-hmm. on 25 millimeter <laughs> tires so um there's just a lot of good roads out there i mean you have a situation where it's you're gonna kind of the way the roads are out there there's a lot of gravel roads and a lot of just back country roads and so the, the routes you do are gonna be about 50 percent gravel 50 percent road oh wow but, wow you know yeah, because you're going to just connect a lot of different different segments of uh, gravel with a road course, and then it gets you out to a lot of new places, or you can do a route that you couldn't do if you if you didn't have that gravel road to connect things together. So, and accessibility for events is obviously going to be a lot greater. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, with having we have a ton of events in Western Massachusetts and Vermont and you know, West, you know, eastern part of New York, so and some in Connecticut too, so. Talk to me about this Iceland thing. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, you might have seen the. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, yeah, know, what, know what, what this what is. It is. Yeah. yeah, so I actually signed up for uh, yeah, the Rift Iceland, Iceland uh-huh. next next year. That's kind of my my big thing that I'm doing, and uh, we have about six or seven people that I ride with that all signed up. So, so f- take it, take me take me into the event from somebody who has no clue of what's going on. Yeah, so if you haven't heard of this thing, I mean, you can get out on, on YouTube and watch some videos by Ted yeah. King or whatnot. But um, so it's a uh, gravel race they put on last year, the first time. Um, it's in Iceland, and uh, I think the the event organizers, the promoters, are uh, they worked with a group out here, uh, or are from the United States. But um, it's Lauf Cycling, who creates a good gravel bike with the you've seen the, the weird <laughs> the four Justin yeah. had that Justin four. Yeah. had one yeah. here last they're week. based yeah. in Iceland and so they they promote this thing and um, you're basically riding your bike around a volcano in Iceland uh, it's 200 kilometers um, and it's mid the middle of the summer late in July oh so, so as you, you know the the, uh, the sun basically never goes down yeah. <laughs> at that time of year so um, so you don't have to worry about trying to get enough before dark or anything. <laughs> you just no lights. <laughs> yeah. There oh are God. some cutoff points where you have to uh, make make the um, check-in station by a certain time to stay on the course. Um, there's a few kind of river portages crossing. What was wow. the total distance? It's Two. 200 kilometers. 100 yep. about, it's about 120 miles, I think. Yeah. So you basically go out and uh, do a loop and come back the same road the last five miles or so. Hmm. Cool. It just sounds awesome. I mean, the scenery is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, 
I'm just, I, I, I don't mean to make this a whole gravel thing, but um, as a guy who was a very competitive road cyclist and, and all this stuff, are you entering the event, these events, are you thinking of them as a race or are you thinking of them as a, I, it's me against the course? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the, the event because you have some events where they give you a timing chip and there are a lot of pro guys there. Yeah. And it's everybody's trying to finish the course as fast as they can. And, and those ones I want to see if I can beat all my buddies and, sure. and like yeah. To, yeah. do the best time I can. Um, and so I'm going to, you know, at the, at the rest stations, you're going to basically just stop as fast as you can, maybe top up a water bottle if you need to, and you're going to keep going. And then there's other races, um, other events. We have a big event in kind of Western Mass that goes up into Vermont called the D2R2 that's been around for like 10 years. And it's, is super scenic um but they have multiple different courses you can do from long you, i think the longest one's like 180 kilometers and it's it's like brutal hilly climbs <laughs> um but uh the uh you know it's just scenery and it's about stopping it for lunch by this waterfall with a covered bridge and, wow. yeah, and yeah. they have a great lunch and they in the in great rest stops and an after party with beer and stuff so that's more about just riding with your friends and mm-hmm. whereas uh like the the overland is more of a race type of situation. Okay. So it, it, it's going to vary from from event to event, and I'm just I, I we spent a lot of time talking about the death of racing, the death of some of these events, and I'm and how gravel is is just this gigantic thing, and it's growing so much, and there's so many of these types of events. I, I hate to put it in the same vein as triathlon, where it's you against yourself, you against the course. And that a lot of people drift to that, are attracted to that because it's you get dropped. You're still in the race. Yeah. You're still going. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it. I mean, you know, after I kind of stopped doing the USAC crits and road races, yeah. it was kind of OK. I was out of recycling for a while and getting back into it. And do I want to lose skin in a criterion one weekend <laughs> <That's> <laughs> or, yeah. And, yeah, or get dropped and kind of be on my own or these races, you know, they're like a party atmosphere and, and you're going out there and you're riding, just trying to beat your friends and, um, against the course and some great, great you know, riding. So, um, yeah, it's a different challenge, right but, on. but you still feel like you're getting a little bit of, of a competitive, uh, outlet. So, well, I think that's, that's what's so unique about road racing is because really when there is, you can't create that atmosphere like just lay back that that if you're going there it's not a bucket list hey i'm i'm gonna go uh do yeah. cascade classic <laughs> no you well, just so don't like, do that you know yeah. <laughs> you're just like trying to sign yeah, up yeah, if you yeah. haven't ever because i mean but you see a whole different level of people at these races exactly. from people that just signed up and they haven't ridden that much for same there. with the ironmans people just like i want to do an ironman i want to yeah. do yeah dirty kansas or mm-hmm. gravel race i mean all those are set up for that road racing Absolutely, that you just don't go. It's because it's categories. It's because you're you're put into um, ability categories. Y- even and with and these events, your your waves. You may have waves, but yeah. but essentially, there's there's this feeling of you're doing the same thing that the guys on the front are. Where road racing, you're very divided. Mm-hmm. You're you're not. Well, even if if you're a rookie, I mean, my first year is is a Cat Four. I looked at stage race. I did like a three day stage race. You're you're wrecked. Mm-hmm. You're, you're like yeah. You have no idea. But it, it's just a different creature. It is definite, and and it doesn't provide itself or it doesn't lend itself to people sticking around to do it because it you get your teeth kicked in, yeah, at every level. You know, so yeah, it gets, dep- gets depressing as hell, yeah. and that's where the so hopefully that gets more people into road cycling. Yeah, yeah. That's based the, based yeah. on that. <laughs> that's honestly, that's why I think Paul likes it. Yeah, he likes his ass kick. Yeah, that's, that's right. road. That's he's an ass man. <laughs> that's uh, road savior. Is is these other genres, yeah. these other uh-huh. types t- types of cycling? Um, uh, mountain biking helped bring people to road, and I think gravel's going to do the same. And cross and cross. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So. Hopefully we'll, we'll we'll get you know not to be just specifically about road. The show's not specifically about road. We tend to talk about it, but uh, hopefully it's a savior. And we're not talking about running, Jack. So just, <laughs> I, I didn't even bring it up uh, not once. I brought it up. Yeah, even though it's all over you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, before we get to trivia, I do want to say that I um I I had some people 
I don't know why, but some, some listeners actually asked me if I joined the athletic club thing like that. And I did my free week. I tried my free week out. Uh, my first half, my first workout, actually the weekend's tomorrow. My first workout was brutal. It was a, a hit, a high intensity interval. Uh, it was great. I mean, it was, I found myself in a room and I, this again, I guess if I have to premise it, maybe it is, but it's not sexist. I was surrounded by a, a, a group of women who were just, you know, normal people like me, I guess. And um, this class kicked my ass. This class absolutely destroyed me. In fact, I was sore for three days. And then I went back again this last Saturday and I tore my calf muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Which, upon research, I found that. I didn't tear my calf, mu- calf muscle because I was a stud. I tore my calf muscle because I, I don't stretch enough, yeah. and, I, and it's, it's in frequency of use and those types of things. So I just want to call out attention to the fact that it is not Stretching. the fault of Tailwind Fitness. I am going back <laughs> to Tailwind <laughs> Fitness, and I'm going to continue to kick my ass by these people. It was, it's, yeah, they're great workouts, and we'll, hopefully it'll, it'll change things. As far Can't as they, next year they goes. provide therapy for you? They I mean, do. Aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so that's the whole point physical, of their workout. Physical, gonna, yes. Yeah. Oh, they're, so they're, you're saying they're hurting me intentionally yeah, so I'll go down their long term oh, customers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's Hopefully they're deal. listening tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you lost that sponsorship. Take, <laughs> take this bat and yeah. hit your knee repeatedly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to go see uh, Jeff yeah. Down yeah. downstairs. Jeff, Jeff downstairs. Yeah. He deals with the bad injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm I'm in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go. And, and th- I think the coolest thing about it is, and, and this is me being cheesy again, is the fact that my wife and I are going yeah. well, together. That's so not like, cheesy. That's a good thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, my yeah. wife ran stairs with me when no one else did. Did she? This yeah. last last Sunday. Yeah, it was the Sunday Sunday before. before. Yeah. I know stairs are closed, Paul. Uh-uh. Are you are you trespassing? They always close it down one side. Oh, for winter, because oh, they okay. only clean up one side. They actually mm-hmm. clean those stairs. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, are you are you guys ready for trivia? All right. No, are we ready for trivia? So. We're fifty minutes in. Okay. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have new categories too. I've been oh, wow. working hard on new categories. So first of all, before we get to it, Pack Villa Trivia sponsored by our friends at Gooder. Gooder Glasses, G-O-O-D-R dot com. Go and check out their lineup. And in fact, I have a very special presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Because of his work actually doing what he promised he was going to do, I have a gooder surprise for the one and only um, glass breaker himself, Paul Maine. <laughs> Shit. Um, our, our friends at Gooder were kind enough to uh, supply the pair. No, are they breakable? Not, no, well, these phew. are not breakable. Okay. Uh, but, okay. but you get to name the actual glasses. Are you, you can serious? Look up, no, you can look on the side. You can see what glasses that have been purchased for you. If I can name them. Can you you may. Pint yeah. breaker? This is great. Look at it. It's all black. Ginger soul. Ginger soul. <laughs> Paul had mentioned his desire for a pair of the ginger glasses soul. that are all black. Everything's yeah. black. Black like ginger called soul. Called a ginger yeah. soul. A ginger soul. And there's a running gag between yes. you and your son. After uh, the yeah, Seattle gig. Yeah. yeah where we nice. where we made some some comments. Yeah. So Paul now has a pair of a ginger's souls because I remember him mentioning that so at the beginning and the Gooder. outset. Thank Thanks you. to our friends at Gooder yes. for, for supplying yes. Paul with a pair of ginger souls. Black, dead, and lifeless. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger fucks. <laughs> nice. All right, are you guys ready? Competition yep. is on the line. I need a beer. Oh, Jack's got to get a beer. So in the meantime, I'm going to introduce the newest category. The newest category is simply called... I can't play I very well. I love Elvis Costello. <laughs> this category is called Books. I Write the Book. All right, gentlemen, we are going to um, fade out... Elvis, because oh, thanks, Jack. Thanks for opening your beer right in front of the mic. Um, this is um, what I'm going to supply, gentlemen, you with tonight is a list of book titles written by cycling-oriented authors, all of whom have competed in one way, shape, or form. And your task is to simply name the author. All right. So if I give you a title, for example, if I were to say uh, 
Greg LeMond's complete book of bicycling. Paul. Paul would Greg say LeMond. Greg yeah. LeMond. And you would start with your <laughs> own name. All right. Do we that. understand the concept here? I'm going to now take my cool multi-six color pin, which has been clicking through the entire show because I have obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, Paul, Jack, and Brent. Okay. And um, you obviously chime in by saying your name first. That is how you actually respond. Jack is looking around with his shifty eyes because he's getting competitive. All right. So, gentlemen, are you ready to play I Write the Book? Your silence tells me you are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our first title is A Rough Ride. Paul. Paul. Paul Kimmage. Paul with the first point on the board by Paul Kimmage. The second title, Jack, you're fucked. <laughs> is the secret race the secret race Jack Jack Paul Sherwin <laughs> <laughs> it's he just was, a Paul theme here a secretive guy <laughs> he was a really secretive I'm guy gonna, I'm, since it's up now I'm going to take a secret race I think that was done by um, David Miller nope can't Brent, you have yeah, it. It's, on, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just, I've, I've heard of the book. I just can't mm-hmm. think of the author. All right. I read this one on, uh, check, read on audiobook. This one's by Tyler Hamilton. Oh, oh, okay. I read that one too. Okay. Yeah. Continuing on. One way ticket, nine lives on two Paul. wheels. Paul? That would be Jonathan Vodders. Paul uh, begins an early. That's a good book. It's so far like one of my Ooh. favorites of all the. I haven't read that one. The Naughties. <laughs> <laughs> the that's what they're labeled this the, yeah, the naughties during the naughties pro cycling on ten dollars a day jack jack chris horner nope <laughs> i will say this gentleman has <laughs> been on the pack filler <sighs> hang this on author I'm gonna has s- been on the pack filler I'll, I'll chime in is it bob roll hell pro cycling on ten dollars a day <laughs> paul can you give me the jeopardy theme no uh, all right. i don't have that one all right um I'm going through Jack. all those. No, nope. sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> it's not Leonard Zinn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Phil Guyman wrote that one. Oh, Phil Guyman. Yeah, very good book. Hey, Phil, Phil Guy. Yeah, oh, sorry. Triumphs and turbulence. My autobiography. You got to love that he actually put my autobiography in it. <laughs> that one might be a tough one to figure out, but. I'll let you guys answer. Triumphs and Turbulence, My Autobiography. Mm. Jack. It. Jack. Francisco Moser. No. Wow, what an abstract response. Yeah, I don't think he's like written that. a book, but if you did, I'd yeah. read it. Yeah. Yeah. Triumphs I and uh, then Turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's Eat them at this wheel. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. That's because like all Italians sound like that. <laughs> they all do. Yeah, that's not racist. I can't. Uh, Chris Boardman. Ooh. Oh, well. Okay, this one's That's not go. one I would read. Hey, You're our ready? record. <laughs> I, I should get a half a point. <laughs> no, because the same <laughs> the guy got hour. the same record? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's not about the bike. Paul. Paul? Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. I'm, I'm surprised you read that one. one. I, I did. I did read them. It's all about the bike. He's the naughties. I know this one. It's all about the bike. I know this one. Hang on. Uh, Paul. Paul? Oh, shit. Jack. Floyd Jack? Landis. <laughs> <laughs> or the opposite. Leonard Zinn. <laughs> Leonard Zinn. That one was written by Sean Yates. Okay. That's Leonard right. Zinn would have been a good one, though. Leonard Zinn would have been a good one. It's all about the bike. It's all about the bike. Because that was one yeah. of his famous statements. You know. My world. I've read this one. I'm glad I don't lose points for guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. That's the key here. My world? Yeah. Book two of Lance Armstrong. <laughs> Peter Saga oh, wrote I, I, My I almost, World. Pee Wee Herman. Okay. I'm, I'm running out of hope for this category. A Descent. My epic fall from cycling superstardom to doping dead end. <laughs> 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 That's the part two of Lance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that really a book? That is a book. Can and you repeat the title? Descent. My epic fall from cycling superstardom to doping dead end. Jack. Jack. Floyd Landis. No, that's actually <laughs> yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah. That's not bad. 
Is he Dutch, doper, <laughs> or dead? Uh, He's Dutch. He wouldn't <laughs> been into that. Doper? Oh. Dead. <laughs> Here, we got to get in the Dutch. It, it, is, it, it is not, it's not Tan Dam. Nope. No. Oh, God. Marco Pantani. Brent's the only one with an open category left. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't have a guess. Thomas on Decker. Thomas okay. Decker's uh, who I meant, not Tan Dam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. uh, we've only got two left, and these these ones are going to go fast. The tour according to G. Paul. Oh. Garrett Thomas. Garrett yeah, Thomas. Yeah, it's not fast enough on the <laughs> time <laughs> Last you one of this category, name, yeah. the loyal lieutenant. And I'll give you the second half if anybody has doesn't have it. Leading out Lance yeah. and pushing through the pain on the rocky road to Paris. Long ass Paul. title, Paul. Paul. I'll say Sean Yates. Nope. Ah, Jack or Jack? Mark? Frank Andreo. Frank Andreo says Jack. Incorrect. Go uh, with it, Brent. Just, just think along those lines. <laughs> You're so close. Uh, Leading George out. George Hancock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Point for Brent. <laughs> well, we got the whole team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did. Basically, yeah. yeah except well, Sean Tyler. Yates did have. I don't you're remember you're titles. Motor oil. But Sean Yates had it. He wrote a book, too. Okay, I'm going to fuck with you guys because you're all really old. You ready for yeah. the next category And before we right. get going here? Are we supposed to Gentlemen, say yes, Pat? This is the book of Eddie. Oh, wow. All right. I will be reading from you segments from Eddie B's book of Complete <laughs> Bicycling. Oh, wow. I read it twice. Some timeless. Some really outdated. All right. And you will fill in the blank or answer the questions according to facts from Eddie Borshevitz, former USA cycling coach. Two by each. Don't be beach boy. <laughs> he used to say two by each. And he two used to, each. he looked at the one of the things he said directly to me once was, Pet, stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> Pet. Fuck you not. Pet, stop crying. Stop crying. That was it. Yeah. I think yeah. he spelled my name P E T. Yeah. Okay, here's the first one. According to Eddie, he has no reservations about this. What are we doing? You're going to yeah. fill in the blank. Oh. All cyclists must eat raw meat. Pork. Jack, Jack, Jack. actually what was it? Time chimed in first, even though he didn't say his name. All cyclists must eat meat. Meat. Eddie, Eddie said that back he, in the He day. actually pushed raw meat. He actually. Raw. Yeah. Or, or yeah. He, yeah. That was a big thing wow. with Eddie. Yeah. Okay. Number two, training, training must start no later than this date. Jack, Jack, December first. Holy shit! Jack read the book. Yeah, I read no, it I twice. I lived it December first, eighty five. I lived this. Lived this <laughs> Number three, I should almost do it in his voice. For good climbers, the tactic is all. Now that's Russian. The, for good, <laughs> well, he's climbers, Polish. It's close. For yeah. good climbers, and I remember this picture in the book. The tactic is to always blank the gear, never blank it. Fill in the blanks. For good climbers, the tactic is to always blank the gear, not blank it. I will give you a hint. There was a picture of Greg Lamond in a Peloton on, uh, uh, right above the caption. Jack. Jack. Spin a gear, not push it. Anybody else? I was going to say spin a gear, not mash it. Spin a gear, not mash That's it, great. Paul. It's something to do with the shifting part. It does have to do with the uh -huh. shifting part. I'd say... I don't know. For good climbers, the tactic is to always increase the gear, mm -hmm. never decrease it. So well, it's the opposite. always yeah. shift yeah. up on a climb wow. because that's natural and that yeah. just happens. You know what? I do that. Yeah. You lie. You get your ass dropped. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see when you're climb? getting your ass <laughs> dropped. <laughs> I'm going to include, I'm gonna include uh, what I consider a potential typo in this next one. It has been proved... Many times that it is impossible, no, that it is possible to come back from more than one blank and win the race. Jack. Jack. Bonk. Nope. Bonk. Pork sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Paul with a pork sandwich. Nope. It is possible to come back from more than one blank and still win the oh, race. Flat tire. I don't know. <laughs> break away. Puncture is oh, actually right. correct. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. After a race, never get off the bike and start blank like, a, <laughs> like a duck. 
crying. <laughs> crying. Stop crying, Ted. Stop crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> fucking Junior. <laughs> he did call us fucking juniors while we were riding in the back of his mm. Le Car. <laughs> because how many people? How many people yeah. fit in the back of a Le Car? Uh, apparently, Richie and Cappy and me. Mm. That was it. And he told you to stop you're crying. Because you stupid juniors. Yeah. yeah, stupid juniors. He was yelling at us. Yeah. Stupid get in juniors. the back car. Because we were feeling so... F- no, anyway. Um, it, after a race, never get off the bike and start blank like a duck. Shitting like a duck. Don't. Jack. Paul says don't start <laughs> shitting like a duck. Waddling. Waddling. <laughs> <laughs> like a duck. Brad. What are you going to say? Quacking? Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, come that's on. That's the only that's thing that I can think of is quacking. I don't know. Don't start drinking water like water. a duck. What? Yeah. He's Polish. <laughs> uh, we're getting down there. Number six in a criterium, ride with your hands on the blank. Drops. Jack, dro- Paul drops. Paul yeah. drops. Jack uh, drops. I'm gonna say hoods. To go on. Brent wins with hoods. hoods. Wow. He said That's to ride totally with wrong. your hands on the hoods. Totally and you know wrong. why he said to ride with your hands on the hoods? Tell so us. you can actually sit up tall and breathe and see easier. It's bullshit. <laughs> it is <laughs> kind of bullshit. bullshit. Okay. He never did a U.S. Yeah. grid. Gentlemen, <laughs> yeah. gentlemen, name one special requirement for team time trialists. He gave one, two, three, four, five requirements. I only need one of those special requirements for somebody to be a good team time trialist. Now, think about the book. Think about some of the responses we've re- received. Push massive gear. <laughs> Paul says push massive gear. Uh, no. Damn. I will say smooth pedal cadence. I hate to say this, but no. Jack? Be a good teammate. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. One, they must be fast. Huh. <laughs> Never would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Two, they must be smart. Wow. Hey, hang on, hang on. They must for the team time trial. Yeah, you must be he smart. Yeah, Bostic on there <laughs> and John Fry. <laughs> hey, Bostic was a freaking engineer, man, water engineer. Uh oh, sorry, CP. They must have quick recovery. This is my favorite one. They must have good ability in the individual time trial. No, well, that makes sense. That's yeah. a given. And they must have good bike handling techniques. So those were those. Hmm. Okay, once you finish your race and ride back to the hotel, what should you do right away? Jack. Jack. Get out of your shorts. Yep. Paul. Paul? Uh, shower. Shower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is correct. I love this book, man. It's right over there. It's it's gorgeous. I, I'm That's never giving it away. Number too. nine. How does the disciplined writer respond to this following quote? You're a strong athlete. One beer won't matter. Duh. No. Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> no. That's uh, Brent. You got something that might top those? That's basically all I was going to say, so I don't know. Fine. Then I choose not to have one. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll get, technically give that one to Paul. <laughs> Fine, then. I'll choose not to have one. Okay, nerd. Number 10, last one of this category. If you raced often, you should replace this every year. Jack. Chain. Jack. Chain. Anybody else? Saddle. Brent, saddle. <laughs> I would say cassette. Actually, he says you should replace your frame Ooh. every year. Wow. That's only if you ride Vetuses like yeah. I used to. <laughs> That's every month. All right, gentlemen. I, um, I have yeah. to step away from the microphone for our final question tonight for a Uh-oh. second here. because right. um, So you guys got to fill in while I walk across the studio to the fridge. Well, what I'll do is I'll ask Brent, do you have any of your Team Spokane jerseys? I still do. I still have that uh, one of the two wheel transit on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I still upside have down, two wheel yeah, transit. Yeah, it, it was printed upside down. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, what was printed uh, upside down? The two wheel transit on the JT yeah. jersey. So, it's, uh, so when, you're, when you're in the arrow, yeah. arrow position, when you win, it yeah, 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 on the sides. Yeah. Okay. yeah. See, it, bad press is good press. Yep. That's how that went. Yeah. 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 I do remember. I have one fond memory as you prep. W- w- do you remember Horse Haven? Race. Yeah. You were. I can't remember who you raced for. I had. I was racing with uh, Scott McSpadden and and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Terry I did McLeod. that a couple times with. Uh, well, I did that. Well, I did it as part of the. Uh, it was an. It was a collegiate race one time, but I also did it probably a couple other times. Uh, yeah, it was a one-two race, and and you okay. climbed up up. Yeah. You got on the plateau, right? Yeah. 
And and of course, all the heads of state were there, like uh, Willett and uh-huh. Dalka and stuff. And there was a breakaway, and somebody on your team, and and then I got orders from my team. You and I had to bridge. Look, when we got down to the bottom of the hill, yeah, and it just you and I were just slamming it. And then we turned. We have to go up the hill. Yeah, I remember and that. I just got punched out. I mean, I was done. I was done. We right, man. It, in, it's so. a time part. It was a good. So, it was good. Know. Well, yeah. are you ready? I, I am ready. To, you said by time. Thank you for so. filling in. Yeah. No, I All appreciate right. that. Um, by that the way. A, that um, was good time. Somebody who's been commenting regularly on on Mixler, we all have to drink because Roger. Oh, uh, Drake. Roger Thompson. Yeah. Hi, Roger. Um, I okay. figured it'd be my wife. Gentlemen, in three random water bottles uh, st- standing here in front of you, I have three different lemon-lime flavored oh, no. energy beverages. In no particular order. We have uh, the Lemon Lime Hydration Sport Mix from Scratch Labs. We have the Noon Sport for Exercise Lemon Lime Flavored Beverage. And we have the Hammer Nutrition Enduro Lights Fizz Lemon Lime Flavor. I bet you one is fizzy. I need a spit cup. You need a spit cup? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what the challenge is is to not only uh, identify them, but who can identify the most correctly in their glasses. Okay? So I will allow you guys, if you wish, do you wish to write down notes on your, yeah. on your individual decisions? Mm. So I'll Thank have, you. I'm away from Mike, so this is professional broadcast. Can I have your multicolored pen? Nope. No one gets to touch that. Mm. You can have my monkey. It's like it's monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch my monkey. So touch it. I think I only have two pets. No, there's more back here. I asked. All right. It. Okay. I, I'm at what color do you want? Different color for each. <laughs> That's a bad I pencil. Do. Did you see this bottle, by the way? Yeah, I had yeah. one. U.S. Raleigh cycling team. There's a Ramada one. pen that I stole from the hotel. Yeah. Don't tell anybody yeah. because so nobody scratch. ever does that. All right. We have scratch, we have hammer nutrition, and we have noon hydration. Do you have numbers on the bottle? I do. Scratch, noon, and fizz. So, to begin with, I will pour into each of your glasses a splash without spilling on my electronic equipment. Are you getting paid? (laughs) Is this a paid sponsorship? None of these are paid endorsements. Is Good. Jack, mm. Jack, Brent might need your pen. Mm. Can't use green. Use orange. Number one, lemon lime use flavor. Orange. I intentionally refrigerated them because sometimes drinks can take like taste like ass when they're warm. As you write down any any notes you may choose, do you have any commentary on the flavor of said beverage? Dread- Paul, this is dreadful. It's dreadful. Yeah. Jack. Mm. It's not so bad. Brent, how do you prefer, do you mm. prefer this um, specific brand of lemon lime? No, this would not be my first choice. Mm-mm. Not be your first choice. Okay, so you may all choose endorsement free what brand you think the first one is. Can we do beer in between? Yo, God, yeah. Clean yeah, the like, palate, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, Brent, here's that actual. What are you drinking? What are you oh. drinking tonight, Paul? St. Bernardus uh, number eight. God, I'm hitting my own mic stand. Professional here. All right. Do I have to get a second glass? No, no, no. 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 I, I dumped. That's why I got a shirt. <laughs> oh, it beer. Well, that's probably an IPA, so that might improve it. Oh. <laughs> it's like a lemon lemon wedge in my IPA. Number two. Coming at you, gentlemen. Lemon lime. Hydrogen replacement beverage. Hydrogen. <laughs> H2O, what the fuck am I saying? Number two for the... By the way, I think... What did I say? This was going to give how many points? we got to go with five points on this one. Five points on number two. Quit cheating. Jack's cheating. Paul, original opinions on number two. It's way better than hide, the other. Way hide. better than the no. other. Still hide not. My answer. Jack, any opinions on number two? Clean. Clean. Yep. Clean. Clean. Mm-hmm. Notice that that number two is the only one that has any color. Mm, I mm-hmm. noticed that right yeah, now. Yeah. Right yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, number three. Here we go. 
This is exciting. People probably <laughs> listening to this going mm, the visual. Well, at least you got cameras. You got cameras. We do have the cameras switching back and forth. Mm-hmm. Number three. Remember, winning gets five points. Number three. Mm. <laughs> Jack just letting out a random hum. Can I have more of number three? Oh, Paul wants more of number three. Number three seems the most sweet. It's how he's going to get home. That sounded like somebody peed in the studio. Mm. Paul actually wanted more of number three. This is this Opinions. is like, I would, I would add gin to this. <laughs> it's that good. It, it is very good. Jack likes it the most. Brent? It's excellent. Thoughts? Yeah, number three was probably the, the best tasting. All right. Um, how do we want to do this? Do we want to have each of you... Um, oh, let's do, let's do, okay, let's have you all vote on what you thought number one was. I need a pen. In order to the, fir- the first one handed to us. The first yeah. one handed to you. Yeah. The first one handed to you, Paul, what I, brand fizz. do you think it was? I think it's Fizz. Fizz is not a brand. Fizz is a, uh, a model. Oh, hammer. hammer. Hammer Nutrition. Paul says number one is Hammer Nutrition. I have, I have that also. Jack says I number one is Hammer, hammer number one. All of you say number one is Hammer Nutrition. Number two. You're not going to let us know? No, because no, then we'll let change you know our the answers. <laughs> Paul, what did you say number two was? Noon. Noon. Paul says number two is noon. Jack? I say it's scratch. Jack says number two is scratch. I also said scratch. All right. Number three would obviously be then. Scratch for me. Paul says it's scratch. Noon. Jack noon. says it noon. was noon. Yep. And Brent says noon. it was noon. Okay, gentlemen. Do I have a drum roll? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, just, I, don't, I don't think do I do. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. That's just rap. Hi. Hi. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, number one was indeed Hammer Nutrition Fizz. And that's atrocious. You didn't like it. Oh, it was Hey, come on. Paul didn't He's like going to lose his sponsorship. So much for the endorsement from Hammer Nutrition. Although mm. Steve Bourne is a good friend of mine, and I do drink a lot of Hammer Nutrition project mm. products. I do like it. By the way, we have the Orange Challenge and the Recovery Drink Challenge coming up in future episodes. Um, challenge. <laughs> it's like waterboarding with... Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to pour it on your forehead. Right, right. Um, <laughs> number two was... Noon. Oh, really? Number two was wow. noon. And number three was scratch. Thank you very much. I'm Thank kind of you. surprised in the bag. I would have thought it was yeah. uh, the color. I've used yeah. the scratch. And sure. I, I, I just thought I remembered that it had a color to it. Yeah. yeah. So number three was. Number three was scratch. Was scratch. Great. It's really good. Yeah, uh, okay. So personal really opinions. Do you yeah. guys like number three yeah. the best? I haven't yeah. even had any of it. So on mic, I'm going to take a little swig. Like I it. said, you could put some gin in that. In oh, yeah. Thing. It is good. That is it's way better when it's cold. It's in a yeah. hammered, hammered. Uh, yeah, bottle. that was the deceiving. Part. I did yeah, have the hammer bottle. Really, <laughs> really confused. <laughs> They're all hammer. That's how I threw you. What are you talking Damn about? It. They're all hammer. Damn I see it right there. That's how I threw you. Fuck things up that way. So Paul is our uh, once again uh, trivia master of of the event. Yeah. So um, before geek. we before <laughs> <laughs> by geek before we sign off. Um, uh, first of all, Brent. Dude, it's good to see you. I, I, I think I said that when you first walked into the studio. It's been probably 20, been 30 years. Time, yeah. Um, probably at least 25. I love social media because you're able to connect with these people. And every time I see you, you're doing a really cool event. So I'm going to live vicariously through you at these cool events. Biker Brent on Instagram. Oh. Bike Ride Brent, I think. Bike Ride Brent. Oh, it's Biker Although, Brent. I, I used to have a website called bikeride.com, but... I'm no longer associated with that, but uh, that's kind of why I have that there. So I probably need to change my username at some point. Oh. <laughs> right on. Okay. Um, and and Jack and Paul, fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. You know, another episode in the can. Uh, subscribe to the show. If you listened to the Mixler feed, thank you very much. That feed is unfortunately not on the desktop right in front of me. CP's supposed to be here taking all those. And, but you um, didn't ask him. 
I don't. Shouldn't have to ask. You should <laughs> just know. Just show up every right. Monday night. Yeah. Damn it. He should just know. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Even when, even like last week when I did the Steve Cummings interview, he, Chris should just be hanging out outside, just whining, looking, <laughs> looking through the window, <laughs> like a sad dog. Huh. Yeah, don't you, you have like, don't you, you have like a bat do, light, Joel? a bat light that goes off and yeah, CD it's a looks motion up, light. <laughs> looks up at the sky, <laughs> and puts on his cape and runs to the. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mixler YouTube. Hi YouTube. I'm going to wave to both cameras at once. Um, keep keep going. Keep subscribing, all that stuff. Keep commenting on what you hear. And I guess that's it. One hour, 18 minutes in. Big thanks to our friends at Gooder. Thank you for the glasses, yeah. Especially for Paul's ginger's <laughs> soul. soul. Uh, Jackson got a pair of Christmas-based ones. Um, and every time I have to say, um, <laughs> Jackson got a pair of fi- Christmas ones that I kid you not are called Happy Festivus, you filthy animals. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the glasses. The and you got to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I guess that's it. Talk to you soon. Clear. You're still recording. I guarantee it. Still no, we're still on Mixler. Still on Mixler. No. Hi. Hi, Y. Hi. Hi, Roger. Oh, drink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't oh, got Roger another. Roger says he was killing it. He was killing the... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He knew all probably all the books. Yeah. yeah what's Paul win? I almost said that Peter Sagan. What do you uh, win? I, I got these. Oh, Paul yeah. won a pair of gooders. Yeah. But, okay. but Brent, because he came all this way, yeah. you get to choose, dude. Do you want a pair of gooder? Do you want pack filler swag? Ooh. I gotta get over here to get. I it. wear my pack filler hat almost every day, by the way. Do you? I do. <coughs> it's getting dirty. <coughs> by the way. Swag in the form of hats and t-shirts and sweatshirts. I don't know if you noticed this. Well, we got gooders. Pack filler's been uh, wow. wide for. Oh, okay. You're not coming back. You so are the, you a hat guy? I'm definitely a hat guy. You better take more than one. You better take more than one. Are you a are you a gooder or a fabric t-shirt sweatshirt kind of guy? He won't take the bread, but he'll take the gooder. I'll definitely take that, so that's cool. No, the gooder glasses, I mean, they're like, I think their most expensive pairs These are, are the like ones we've 30, got five bucks. 35 bucks. Uh-huh. They have the great optics. Those are the ones we've got left. Nice. Choose away, my friend. Gr- really good optics. Um, in the woods, if you're riding yeah. in the woods, you can see quite well. You can Some take of the glasses, a pair out and try yeah, them on. Look at them. Like, so those green ones. So one was the worst. That was oh, atrocious. That's not even food. Hammer. I've, yeah. used, well, I've used a lot of hammer stuff before, but I didn't remember yeah. it. I, like I've that. used hammer because it's free. I mean, I seem to get it. Yeah, that's it. Mike raises it. And it's like, like yeah, okay. Yeah, we have a discount on hammer too. Yeah. Like that. Oh, those are cool. Oh, those are yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They definitely have kind of a, a greenish tint. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so with their lenses, like if you're out, out and about, they have some really odd optics where... Like shiny rocks look really, really bright blue. Oh, it, that's, and that's blue. polarizing. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. But in the woods, I mean, you can go sunshade, sunshade, and, and you can see everything quite roots or, you know, when you're out on your mountain bike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 